Welcome to Healthy Planet, the show for people who care about their health and the health of our planet on the Think Tech live streaming network series. I'm your host, Dr. Grace O'Neill. Joining me today is Nate Hogson, founder of Kaimuki Compost Collective. Welcome, Nate. Hi, right, thank you so much for having me on. I appreciate it. Thank you for being on the show. So can you tell us how you started Kaimuki Compost Collective? Sure. So after graduating from UH, I ended up getting a chemistry degree. So I'm always thinking about how to make stuff. So long story short, I was figuring out how to make fertilizer out of food waste and then was looking at stuff like vertical farming, that kind of space. But then in the process, learned about the problem of food waste, which is a huge contributor to greenhouse gases because of the process of our waste, which is we throw in the trash, then it goes in the landfill, then it builds up all that gas in the landfill, and it just goes into the atmosphere. So I learned about composting through that, and then found out that it's a business that people can do. And then, yeah. That's cool. So you never knew about composting before you started researching it after college? You didn't do it as a child or anything like that? No, didn't. Didn't grow up as a child doing it. Didn't even, I've probably heard the term growing up here and there, but I really thought about it, but ran into it through my own independent research. But a lot of people do already grow up with it. I feel like most people who know about it kind of grew up doing it or something like that. And with composting, can you um, tell us what compost is? We have a good slide for that. Yeah, so compost is simply, you can just think of it as really rich soil. All soil is made up of organic matter that is broken down over thousands, hundreds, tens of thousands of years, mixed in with rocks and stuff like that. But so composting just expedites that process of turning or turning organic matter into soil. So with the compost, how is it that it expedites the process? Like how does it do that for people who don't know? So the process is expedited through microbiology. Some people, there's some variations, things like vermicomposting where worms will eat it and then their poop is the soil that you basically use to plant. But most composting, especially at larger scales, is through microbial composting. So what happens is all the microbes basically eat it and break it down and decompose it and then it heats up really, really hot. It actually goes to about 160 degrees Fahrenheit and above. And through the process of microbial decomposition and heat, the all the organic waste breaks down together over a period of time between two months and a year, depending on the method of composting or the scale of it. So, um, you know, I guess what you're talking about is hot composting. Is there a cold composting or no? Um, there's kind of a cold composting. So cold composting would be you have a pile of trees and mulch and sometimes you throw some food waste in the backyard every now and then you let it sit there. Hot composting is more of an active method where you are controlling the ingredients going in, you're controlling the moisture content because all this stuff matters and you're turning it and you're aerating it and not letting it go anaerobic meaning no presence of oxygen. So I guess to summarize all that you're keeping a certain ratio of ingredients, you're keeping it moist, you're keeping it turned and aerated and all of those things are important to keeping the microbes that are doing the composting alive within the pile. So if you're keeping them alive and healthy, then you're able to make the process go faster rather than in the backyard, you don't really have a managed system. So it's more, it's much slower. So with the backyard, because I have, as you know, I have a huge pile in my backyard with a bunch of crap in it. <laughs> I put all my garden waste in basically. Yeah. How long do you think something like that is going to take to break down? Is that going to take a year, two years, or because it's not in the right ratios? It's not. Right, right. It's it's not hot, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> so, it probably would take about if you took all the waste that you have in the pile right now and you let it sit there without adding anything, touching it or anything. It probably take around a year. But that's not taking into account that you'd be adding more stuff into it. And then also the surface area matters. So if you have a pile of leaves that just sits there, that might take a couple of months. But if you have a pile of logs, that could take years because logs, they're so compact and tight. And there's no surface area for everything to break down. So, yeah, it's composting is much more than just 
throwing some organic waste into a pile and leaving it it's is a misconception especially nowadays because people will be like oh i'm compost you can do it that way though it's not especially if it's at home and it's not a big deal and you just want a place to put your waste it's not the end of the world that you have a pile of green waste in your backyard it's just if you want to have an efficient process where you're like i'm producing compost that i'm going to be using all the time it doesn't matter how you treat it now with the cold composting what kind of organisms you said microorganisms do the hot composting but if you're just doing like the put your garden waste in a pile what kind of organisms are generally composting that is it like cockroaches centipedes or so there is a classification of composters between microorganisms and macroorganisms so the microorganisms would be bacteria and fungus those are the main and they each have different roles so the bacteria are breaking down the more soft and nitrogeny containing material or the green material and the fungus plays a bigger role in breaking down the more woody substances and you know, like wood like substances and stuff like that and then the macroorganisms i wouldn't say if you have a compost pile that's super active it heats up so a lot of people ask about rats and cockroaches and stuff if you have an active compost pile or one of size, it'll get really hot. So it won't attract any pests because they couldn't actually live in the pile. But for cold composting, you would have more of a threat of pests and vermin coming in because it's just, mm -hmm. it's an environment for them to make their nests and possibly eat stuff. That's why if there's any kind of scaled operation going on where people are making it for farming or anything like that, you got to have hot composting going, you have to get tested at labs, stuff like that. Yeah, and so do you have a thermometer in your compost to make sure you reach 160 degrees Fahrenheit? Is that what you said? Yeah. It has to be 160 degrees Fahrenheit. We do have to thermometer it and monitor and make sure that it is getting the proper temperatures to break down everything. Um, another important thing about why it has to be thermometered and the temperature has to be monitored is because there is concerns for pathogens to grow. Because if you think about, say you took a trash can of food waste and you dumped it in your backyard and just let it sit there, if it's not being managed properly, all sorts of nasty microbial things could grow in there too, such as salmonella or E. coli, stuff like that. Those things are threats, but all of those microorganisms that are very bad all are killed off in a scenario where composting is optimal, where it's reaching the right temperatures and it's got the right ingredients within it. So when you're doing the composting, um, what is the most key thing to reaching the temperature of 160 degrees Fahrenheit? Is it the turning? Is it the ratio of carbon to nitrogen? What is the most important thing or is it a combination of the two? Yeah, so it's in all of the above except for water as well. So the first thing is we have to think about, I also, I think of all the compost piles we have as pets. You have to feed it, you have to water it, you have to keep it nice. So when you turn it, you aerate it and keep it oxygenated or aerated. So the, the, all the microorganisms, they all have to breathe. So when you turn it and you bring everything to the top that was within the middle, you bring all that air back into it. Second one would be water. It needs to be moist about a wet sponge, not drenched soaking sponge, but it needs to be wet. So... You know, I think of that like, yeah, you got to drink. They're living beings just like everyone else. So they're breathing and they're drinking. And lastly, they're eating. So the ratio is between carbon and nitrogen. That's the main important ratio in composting. Specifically, it is 30 to 1 to 25 to 1 carbon to nitrogen. And that's at the atomic scale. So for every 30 carbon atoms, there's one nitrogen atom. And so the carbon containing material is important to source. So that is wood, woody material. So that's dry plant waste, cardboard, paper, wood chips, mulch, anything that is derived from dry plant material. And then there is nitrogen containing material. So that would be stuff like manure, food waste, green waste, anything that you can think of as still being alive in a sense. That is nitrogen containing material. So the uh, carbon to nitrogen ratio of um, the cardboard is quite high, correct? 
So um, when you're using the cardboard, do you have to adjust with more uh, nitrogen you're putting in if you're using the cardboard in your compost? So yes, you do have to adjust ratios and all that kind of stuff. So for instance, a piece of cardboard, the carbon and nitrogen ratio of this cardboard would be 400 to one versus, I don't know off the top of my head for like a pile of leaves or something, but let's say it's a hundred to one to 200 to one, it's probably somewhere in that area. So theoretically, you if you had 20 pounds of food waste that you wanted to compost, which is probably about 15 to one carbon nitrogen ratio, you would probably need less cardboard than you would need leaves because there's technically more carbon content within the cardboard if that makes sense yeah so you guys are doing this every day at kaimuki uh compost collective correct you have to adjust depending on what your customers give you you probably have to adjust what you're putting in your compost yes we do do that uh we used to i used to do the math on it like i'd weigh it and i'd do the math and make sure it's all perfect but at this point i mean we can kind of just eye it you have a certain pile about this big you know we've done it enough times to where we don't have to calculate it every single time it can be rough estimates but you can get very exact with it um i would think if you're doing huge 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 operations um you might have to be a little bit more careful about it but when it comes to doing the scale that we're doing it's not if it's heating up and everything's alive in it it becomes compost so how about turning? How often are you turning your compost? Do you have to do it a few times a day? Tw you know, is it twice a day, once a day? You People can. are busy. They want to do compost too. That's always a barrier for me, for instance. Yeah. Um, I would say ideally, in a perfect world, you could do it every day. I think you could. It would be. You can overturn it, but I doubt anyone's going to be overturning their compost it's not like it's not easy work it's kind of la labor laborious but labor yeah, yeah. <laughs> um i think the for this twice state regulation for composting says that it has to be at least once every five days i think if you really want to have something efficient and working at its peak performance that's probably about right but I would say at least once a week is good for if you just have a backyard compost bin. Uh, once a week, that's not so bad, actually. Yeah. I can only convince my husband to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, so I'm wondering how big is your operation at Kaimuki Compost Collective? Is it located in Kaimuki itself? Or um, why the name Kaimuki Compost Collective? If it's not located in yeah, so people have asked me about that. I didn't really think about it, um, to be honest, when I first started the company. But we started in Kaimuki, picking up people's food waste in town or in Honolulu, like from Kaimuki to, let's say, Makiki. And then it became Kaimuki to Pearl City and then Kaimuki to Hawaii Kai. So we've kind of branched out. We even started doing the east side. But we're able to do it because we don't have a, one centralized farm location. so myself and for other people in the space of composting on the island, which there's a bunch of other groups, such as like sustainable coastlines or um, full circle farm, people like them. Um, they Everyone's kind of envisioning a decentralized system, which is very opposed to the traditional way of waste management, not just in Hawaii, but in the States and a lot of other countries, it's centralized. So we got that one landfill, we take everything there and we just dump it there and that's how it works. But when it comes to composting, it's a little bit more, you can be creative with it. So we partnered with little gardens, community gardens, small farms, bigger farms, and we kind of make deals. We go, well, this compost is for the farm or the garden because that's ultimately the use of it. So for making all this compost, it doesn't matter if we can't give it to anyone. So we've kind of all the food waste we're doing in Hawaii Kai, we try to keep it somewhere in Hawaii Kai, everywhere in town, keep the town and so on and so forth. So are most of your customers uh, big supermarkets? Are they individual people? Uh, what's your customer base like? So it started with just residential people. So we would give them a five gallon bucket. We still do this five gallon bucket and they 
put all their food waste in it, postal material, cardboard and paper. Um, we make sure to educate them on things that can and can't be composted. For instance, we don't take postable plastic because it doesn't break down correctly. And yeah. if we're going to be eating the products, I don't want postable plastic in the soil that we're making yeah. personally. It doesn't um, I've tried that, yeah. yeah, it doesn't compost too well. And a lot of the commercial facilities on the other places don't accept it either. It's, at least we're thinking about it, but it's not great. Yeah. Um, we try to educate people on other things that are compostable, such as cardboard. So I always give them the example, if you have a cereal box and you feel the outside of it, it's all smooth, that's actually plastic. So when in doubt, don't, we don't compost it. But yeah. to me, I think part of the mission of this is helping to educate people. So for instance, that cereal box, if we could start as a society acknowledging that that piece of cardboard is lined with plastic, and people choose not to consume it, those companies will have to pivot to using something cardboard that is compostable so that they can retain their customers. So I think there is sort of a chain reaction effect to making composting something that everyone understands in every household. I'm trying to think about understanding, oh yes, who we're working with. So residential people, so we pick up once a week or once every other week, and then we have a drop-off service as well. We're making little 24 seven drop off stations that you can do at any time. We're trying to put them around Honolulu and we'll have empty buckets for people. They can drop off a dirty one, a clean one. So we're doing that. Um, we also started working with some restaurants and some condos and apartment buildings. So we've been, we scaled up to larger apartment buildings and condos. So instead of getting that one person in the apartment, we can get everyone in the apartment. And we've kind of worked with HOAs, property managers. We've even had people within apartment buildings kind of band together and kind of oh, split that's a great idea. Yeah, yeah it's, it's still really early in the space, but it's definitely the way everything is going. So it's exciting to be part of something that's new and developing. Yeah, I mean, I'm wondering as um, a individual person, is it possible to purchase your compost or is it just going to farms right now? So for people who work with us in terms of our clients, if they ask for compost, we give it to them in five gallon buckets or if they want more, um, we'll give them basically as much as they want. If they ask for a truckload, to, you know, we need a truckload by tomorrow. I don't think we could do that because... We have a good amount of compost, but we couldn't just be giving away massive amounts. Plus, there's a lot of transport and labor that goes on with that, like filling a truck up, bringing it to someone, emptying the truck. It's a lot of work, but people want a couple of buckets of compost, you know, we'll always give it to them. Um, but the rest of it just goes to the farms and gardens. That's cool. I mean, you know, I uh, I have these machines because I only do vermicomposting composting because it's easy. Mm -hmm. And um you know, so I have these machines and I don't know if you know anything about these machines, but I have one from Lomi and another one from Vitamix. Have you heard of them? One from where? Lomi. Oh, Lomi. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so, another one from Vitamix. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So those kind of dehydrate the waste, right? And then what do you do with it then? I put it, like, I just sprinkle it in my garden somewhere. Okay. Nice. <laughs> and then I yeah. mean, because with the old dirt so i figure it's kind of like you know more nutrient rich nitrogen rich stuff with like you know stuff that is not rich in nutrients anymore so i figure it must help a little bit but i don't really know you know obviously it's not you know it's you don't have to put in any ratio to put it there but you know when you vermicompost you can't put lemons in like there's things right. you can't put in right? so this way i can put all my lemons and all the stuff right, that right. you know peels i can put it all in there and you know, right and, and just be like a lazy composter yeah. i always tell people I, the best way the best waste management is just doing it what you can at home so if you, people are composting on their own and you know they don't have to work with our group i would be compost collective then that's the best that'll always be the best option for everyone but you know a lot of people are in apartments a lot of people don't have time to do that kind of stuff so it just it's not ideal. No, one, it's never going to be. Everyone's going to be managing their own waste. But people who can, or people who know about it, if they do it. It's always good. 
yeah no i mean it's it's it makes such a difference um so are there uh, i don't i don't know if you want to reveal some of your um companies or restaurants you work with but i mean i think maybe people would be interested in supporting uh, people who are actually um, composting at their restaurant or their corporation. So I don't know um, if that's something sure, that yeah. can be. I'll shout out, I'll shout out the first restaurant that we ever started working with. Um, we actually haven't been back recently, but we kind of were doing it for free for them because it was our first one and we were testing how it worked to do composting at scale. But it's a Peace Cafe on King Street. Uh, oh, shout out, okay. yeah shout out to them they were the first people that we worked with that was outside of residential composting yeah that's great yeah i mean definitely i was just there the other day so i feel really good about that right. yeah <laughs> you know, they're great for them because yeah i mean because it's uh, i don't i mean i think with hot composting you can't put in um any animal bones and like animal products and they're basically i don't think they use that so um it yeah. must be pretty they can just throw everything in so yeah because other restaurants might have to separate out so that's right. great um and then i know um you had a little bit um information on organic in your slides um can you talk a little bit about uh, that like usd organic what that means you know all that sure so back to my uh, academic background i got a chemistry degree so kind of nitpicking some definitions or you know semantics but the word organic means in in science something that comes from life so organic kind of was taken by the food industry to mean something like oh naturally raised animals or food food produced crops produced without pesticides and gmo stuff like that that's not what organic means organic just means like life-based, carbon-based materials. So cardboard is organic, food, all food is organic technically. Anything that you can compost is organic. Yeah, so that's whenever I talk, write proposals or business plans or talk to people about clients, especially about what we can take to compost, I always refer to it as organic waste because saying it's compost, like, oh, we're collecting compost, Compost is the end product of composting, which is the soil. So taking a trash can of food waste isn't like, oh, I'm going to take your compost. It's I'm going to take your organic material and then we're going to compost it into compost. So uh, how many people do you have in your operation doing all this? You know, like you said before, it's very labor intensive. So you must have a couple people working for you that you work with, you know, and then picking it up, you got to you know do you have specific people who pick it up starting out it was just me doing everything uh the pickups the composting i had a lot of friends help and i still do but we've kind of started growing to the point where we have to start hiring and thinking about acquiring or um assets such as vehicles and trailers stuff like that we already have got some but we have definitely are at the point where we're starting to Fire things like that, hire people because it's mm -hmm. something that's coming. And it's it's really exciting to be a part of it, and it's exciting that people care about it. And yeah, um, I want to look at your website. Um, yeah, it's a great website. It talks about um different composting um information. Like you had stuff about the microorganisms in the compost, um, which I thought was very interesting. And then there was an interesting video about mcdonald's and how they're installing these cameras so when someone dumps something that's not supposed to go in a dumpster right, right. That, you know it lures the people right away um so there were some interesting things and there's also um information about subscribing to your service and um right. you know what um you know also if big restaurants like commercial industries want to subscribe um to your service i did like the website a lot Thank you. Um, I'm wondering what's the next step for you? Are you going, are you looking for more farms? Are you going to expand to the west side, north shore? We're always looking for new farms and locations to compost. Like I said, decentralization is the most important thing. We can kind of do one farm or piece of land or plot for every couple of larger scale deals. Like for instance, you could get diver, 
one or two restaurant space to one farm and that would probably be enough compost for what they were doing if it was a smaller scale. Um, we were definitely focused on working with larger groups such as apartments and condos and we found a lot of corporate companies reach out um, to us too. Kind of still in talks with them so probably can't name them but yeah. people that everyone knows so it's really exciting everyone it seems like everyone's kind of dipping their toe into it right now and seeing what happens so it's not quite there yet but it feels like it's something that will just be common knowledge and common practice in the next four or five years which is the right thing to do so it's exciting yeah no that's awesome i mean how is your operation i guess different from the honolulu county's operation don't they have like a Pick up. I mean, I guess part of the issue is that they don't even pick up all the addresses, and that's a huge problem. Like, our right. street, they won't come pick up food waste for our street, you know? Right. So the way the city and county does it, they just have the green bins, and it's only for certain types of residences, mostly homes. And like you said, they don't even do most of them. The uh, city and county said by 2024, which I heard it's going to be moved forward, like 2025, 2026, that they're going to start doing food waste or organic waste collection statewide. But the problem with Hawaii is that there's no infrastructure behind it. So it'll just be people with green bins can put their food waste in it. And that's probably mostly the extent of, and it, it would be taken to Hawaiian earth products or something like that. But that would be the extent of saying that Hawaii compost. I think it's definitely going to be up to private groups, nonprofits, for-profit businesses who are going to, pioneer it in a way that makes sense because I just don't think the state has enough resources to make it something happen soon. Yeah, I think you're taking a great step forward with your company and it's just, it's great that somebody is thinking about this. Um, so we're out of time, but we have to wrap it up. I'm Dr. Grace O'Neill. This is Healthy Planet on the Think Tech live streaming network series. We've been talking with Nate Hogson of the Kaibuki Compost Collective. Thanks to Michael, our broadcast engineer, and the rest of Think Tech for hosting our show. And thanks to you, our listeners, for listening. I'll see you in two weeks for more of Healthy Planet on Think Tech, the show for people who care about their health and the health of our planet. My guests will be Kaimali Stanek and Christian DeCavado, and we will be talking about eco friendly landscaping. If you have ideas for the show or questions for my future show guests, please contact me at healthyplanetthinktech at gmail.com. Check out my website at gracinghawaii.com or Instagram at gracefulliving365 for more information on my projects, including future show guests. I'm Dr. Grace O'Neill. Aloha, everyone. Mm -hmm.